talk about what day trading is. Everybody I talk to seems to have their own definition or uh, their own understanding of what day traders are. Now, day traders are different from investors in that a day trader holds their securities for only one day. That means a day trader, when you go to sleep at night, never has an open position. Okay. So I don't consider myself a day trader because even though I open my trades during the day and most of the time I don't keep them for open towards the end of the day, sometimes I make swing trades that'll stay open for 90 days. Sometimes I'll just keep them open to the next day. But it means when I go to bed at night, I have open positions. So therefore, I'm not a day trader. So a day trader closes out their positions at the end of every day and then starts everything over again the next day. By contrast, swing holders hold securities for days and sometimes even months, and investors hold assets over years. So the short-term nature of day trading reduces some risk because there's no chance of something happening overnight to cause big losses. It also means you can sleep peacefully or you can go on a holiday or take a day off. Meanwhile, many investors have gone to bed thinking their position is in a great shape, then woke up to find the company has announced terrible earnings or that the CEO is being indicted for fraud. Now, I'll give you a perfectly good example. I met a guy not long ago that called himself a day trader. He traded in options, he traded the stock market. Now, you come across a small medical company that he was sure whatever their, their the thing was that they had in front of the FDA was gonna get turned down and the stock was gonna plummet down to virtually nothing. It was only trading at a couple dollars anyway. Well, he loaded up a leverage and bought tons of this stock he held it overnight, and when he woke up in the morning, he was dead broke. What happened overnight was another medical company made an offer to buy them out, and their shares skyrocketed. He was sitting with so many options and so on was so leveraged out that he lost his shirt. Now, that's a bizarre story, but it's true. But it does happen. But the fact is a day trader would never have held their position overnight and wouldn't have had to worry about it and wouldn't have lost their shirt before they woke up in the morning. So there is a flip side. The Dre Trader's choice of securities and positions has to work out in a day or it's gone. So you remember, you don't have the luxury of being in when you're a day trader to say, ah, it'll move more tomorrow or I thought it was going to move today or they delayed the earnings release or this the press release didn't come out that I was expecting. If you're a day trader, I mean, there's no law, there's no broker is going to force you to do anything. But if you're a day trader, you need to close your position at the end of the day. Otherwise, you're not a day trader. And then you're letting your emotions take control. So there's no tomorrow for any specific position. Meanwhile, the swing trader or the investor has the luxury of time as it sometimes takes a while for a position to work out the, the research and, and move in the way it should. In the long run, the markets are efficient and price reflects all information about a security. Unfortunately, it can take a few days for short runs for this efficiency to kick in. I've seen it when Amazon comes out and makes an announcement or Microsoft says something and you would sit there, or especially Apple, and you expect the stock to rally, and for some reason, it doesn't move an inch. But the next day, it soars. Sometimes investors are slow to react or they're waiting for something else or they're distracted. Now, day trading is a crazy business. And please, do not mix up the day trading that we're talking about tonight with all that stuff that was advertised in the 90s with guys laying back on the beach, drinking their margarita, trading on their computer and getting rich overnight. Secretaries becoming billionaires. That's a whole bunch of BS. Day trading is hard work. 
And if you have a little bit of money, you can turn it into a little bit more money. But if you start out with a $1,000 account, you're not going to become a millionaire. Face it, it doesn't happen that way. But you can make extra money. You can pay for your vacation. You can do better than a part-time job. And if you're a full-time day trader, if you have the time and effort to build that account, okay, it may take you years to do it. Most of us don't. We want the extra money. But let's not be out in, you know, in, in left field. Let's not think we're going to be laying on the beach making trades on our computer. Traders work in front of their computer screens, reacting to blips, each of which represents real dollars. They make quick decisions because their ability to make money depends on successfully executing a large number of trades that generate small profits. So a trader isn't <clears throat> looking to buy a stock in the morning at $42. It's going to run up to $59 over, you know, by the end of the day. No. They're looking for small, volatile, or, or, or assets that are very busy, that are moving, that have momentum, either up or down, so that they can make small profits and they're going to be making lots of trades. Let's face it, a stock doesn't move that much in a day. Most stocks don't move that much in a week. <clears throat> the euro, which is the most popular asset, the euro US dollar, I mean, it moves a couple points during the day. But it doesn't move that much. I mean, a, a currency moves less than 1% anytime. So you need to make a lot of little trades, capturing little moves throughout the day. It's a very busy, day trading is a very busy, busy, time-consuming process. Now, you can do it as a part-time job. You can do it as a retired person. You can day trade if you maintain a full-time job. It just makes it more difficult because you can't day trade on your lunch hour. You can't day trade in the hour, half hour before you go to work. But you can say Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, depending on where you're located in the world. Because remember, the currency market's open 24 days, five days a week. C cryptocurrencies trade virtually seven days a week, all day long. Stock markets, depending on where you're located in the world, you can always find something to trade. Commodities are trading, you know, almost all day long. So if you're in Europe, you know, the the American um, commodity exchanges are still open. So you could do it in the evenings. But remember, you have to close out your positions before the end of the day. Remember, each trading day is different. Traders won't find two days in the market that are exactly alike. Yet even though each day isn't exactly like another, there are still patterns that tend to occur over and over, hidden within the seemingly random price movements. And you have to be able to see these. So a, tra a day trader, a good day trader, specializes in only very few assets because they have to spend a lot of time looking at charts and finding those little patterns and being able to analyze their charts and the movements very, very quickly. So if you're just bopping all over the place, you just miss out on all those little quick movements. Now, day trading was originally only available to financial companies because only they had the access to the exchanges and market data. But with recent technology, such as the internet, Individual traders now have direct access to the same exchanges and market data and can make the same trades at very low cost. You know, so with the growth of online trading and online brokers like CMS Trader, it's now made this all available because we can get economics data just as fast as the economics as everybody else. We get news and headlines as fast as everybody. There's no longer sitting in a broker's office waiting for ticker tapes and getting secret data. You know, all of these events are published immediately and you get it all. Now, there are several different styles of day trading suited to different day trader personalities. So day trading isn't just simply buying now, selling in a few minutes. The styles range from short-term trading, such as scalping, where positions are only held in a few seconds or minutes, to longer-term swing and position trading, where a position may be held throughout the trading day. 
So scalpers are constantly bing, 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 bing. And today with automated trading you know, you got, and high frequency trading, you have some traders are executing 200 trades in a day. Okay. Now, some people are using robotic systems and, and all kinds of app, apps that they've downloaded. Okay. There's all kinds of things out there that you can fit into your style of trading. So most day trading systems have a lot of flexibility. I can have open positions for anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours, depending on how the trade is doing. Some day traders will trade multiple styles, but most will choose a single style and only take that type of trade. Day trading also has different types of trades, such as trend trading, counter trend trading, range trades. Trend, tr trend traders are trades in the direction of the current market movement. And counter trend trades are direction against the movement. And you'll have to learn these. I mean, all of this just doesn't come to you overnight. You have to learn how to see trends, understand trends, understand what is a retracement and what is a reversal, and learn how to use these trends or counter trends. You have to develop your ability. J trading isn't about just all a bunch of guessing or using a robot making duplicating trades. No, you have to put as much time and effort into learning and understanding and developing trading knowledge as any other type of trader. Now, range traders are traders that go back and forth between two prices and are used when the market is moving sideways. Now, if you learn to understand support and resistance, you can find prices that are in a channel that, you know, the euro is going from 120.22 today moving up to 120.27, coming back down to 120.22. And it's doing that the whole day. Okay. And there are days like that. There, there's days that assets will bounce between these support and resistance, line, especially when there's sideways congestion and there's no major market data out there. So every time the euro hits that bottom, you buy it. And every time it hits that top, you, you sell your position, close it out and buy a position the opposite way. And because you have, you've locked in your ranges. But again, that's a different strategy. <coughs> so in addition to style and type of day trading, there are other variances between day traders. Some day traders like to make many trades throughout the day, while others prefer to wait for what they consider the best conditions for their trade. And perhaps only make one trade per day. However, many trades are made and the trading process that is used and the desired goal of for making profit are still the same. Now, there are many different financial instruments and markets that can be day traded and they offer it by, by various exchanges throughout the world. The main type of day trading markets are futures, options, currencies, and stock markets. Now, within these types, there are groups of markets based on stock indices like the Dow Jones, the DAX, the S&P, the FTSE, the Nikkei or currency exchange, such as the euro to the dollar, or commodities like gold or oil. Day traders can have access to all the exchanges and all their market data via their broker, right? Right by CMS, we're providing you all the assets, all the prices, all the movement, all the data you need. And this offers faster trade execution at lower cost. You also find that they have the tightest spreads, because spread is your cost. Remember the old days we had commission. Now we have spreads. Spreads are different between the buy and the sell cost. It's only a few pips, but you have to remember, you have to factor that in if you're making hundreds of trades during the day. Now, first, let's be clear about what day trading isn't. It's not investing. Investing is a process of buying a stake in an asset that will hopefully build a profit over a long term. Whether you're buying gold or whether you're buying Bitcoin, whether you're buying oil, well, a guy who's buying gold or gold certificates or ETFs, he's buying to put them away for his retirement. Most people, most stocks are sold as part of some type of retirement package or longer term investment. That's investing. That's not day trading. How long is subjective? But investors generally hold assets for years, some even decades. And they're usually concerned with the business they invest in. They look for companies that make solid profits, pay off debts in timely manners, and have strong pipelines of products and avoid litigation. 
Or you look at gold and you're trying to stay in front of inflation. You don't care that gold blipped up to $1,300 today and fell down $1,250 an hour later and went back to $1,325. You just want to know you bought it at $1,200. <coughs> and it's in your portfolio and steadily next year it's at $1,250. You know, five years from now, it's 12, you know, 75, 10 years from now or 20 years from now, it's a $1,400 because you just want to see your portfolio steadily increase with low risk. A day trader is looking for high risk with high quick profits. Now, in between the two extremes, investing for years and trading in seconds, it gives other investment horizons and other types of trading. Swing trading refers to holding a stake in a stock or commodity for maybe up to several days. Position trading refers to holding a stake in a commodity or a stock for several weeks or months. Okay. They all carry certain amounts of risk, but day trading is probably the riskiest and most controversial. When we look at the history of day trading, we'll learn where its infamous reputation comes from. Day trading is a relatively recent phenomenon. One made possible by several events and rulings throughout the past century. In theory, anyone can become a Formula One race car driver, but in reality, very few people possess the skills or temperament for such a demanding sport. The same is true of day trading. You know, I've been trading for 40 years. I don't day trade. You know, I'm between a swing and a position trader. You need a very, you need to have a specific temperament and it needs to be your thing. I also don't race cars. So again, you have to find what fits you. Day traders must possess certain personality traits and have certain access to certain resources if they're to be successful. Day traders must have an understanding of market fundamentals if they're going to succeed. Because you don't care as a day trader whether Apple is taking their $100 billion in cash and putting it away and conserving it or lending it out and doing whatever they're doing over the long term. You don't care that Apple is going to introduce new products next year. You're only concerned where Apple is going up and down today. You don't care if tomorrow Apple goes broke. All you're concerned with is what is moving today, not even why it's moving. Because you're only looking, you know, you're only looking for Apple to go up a quarter today, 25 cents. You don't care why. You do care why you want to catch that move, but what's going to happen to it tomorrow? You don't care. Now, most of you have many years of experience investing and trading in various markets. They also constant research constantly using services provided through full service online brokerage accounts or information publications like the Wall Street Journal to gauge market sentiment because you're always looking for something that's going to give an asset a boost today. You know, Donald Trump is really good at pushing the stock market up and down. He's very notorious for pushing oil prices up and down. Okay. Now, you need to find that day trading sounds like it's the Wild West, but actually day traders live by a set of rules. Okay, and you'd be surprised what you have to do. Strategy is one thing. Okay, what type of trade you're next, but there's a lot of other things. It takes money to make money is a cliche that resonates with day traders. That's because they often borrow money, and this is called leverage. Now, as you all know, if you're watching the papers and everything else, leverage used to be up to 500 to one. That means if you had $100 in your account, you could basically be trading $50,000 worth of an asset. The regulators have been slowly cutting back on leverage only because too many traders are taking too much advantage of and losing their shirts. And so in order to watch the safety of the investor, the trader, and not let them go hog wild and get themselves in trouble, the regulators are cutting back and cutting back leverage. And starting August 1st, leverage will be much lower. So that Wild West out there of 500 to 1 is gone, you're going to have <clears throat> probably about 30 to 1. <clears throat> but it still allows you to, with a small amount of capital, to make a big position in the market. 
while this is risky, it's absolutely necessary. Using a large amount of capital to make many small trades increases the potential return. Let's just think, if you were trading the euro US dollar <coughs> and you were trading it for just the cash you had, and the euro US dollar doesn't move many points, pips. That's four decimal points to the right in a day. So if you only had a thousand dollars in your account, so you only can only buy a thousand dollars worth of euro US dollar and it moved eight pips. Guess what? You made 80 bucks, but it cost you 120 to make the trade, so you just lost 40. Okay. With leverage, you could have made $240 and covered your costs and walked away with a $200 profit. Well, that is not worth, that's not such a bad thing. Now, day trading is a business and as such requires a business plan. Most plans address short and long-term goals, target markets, trading hours and days, business setup needs, capital reinvestment, tax consideration, reporting, and all the matrices and metrics about a business. Day traders separate themselves from their emotions and never act out of impulse. And this is what we're saying. It has to fit your personality. And that's one of the important things about day trading because you can get stuck in this excitement of trading, trading, trading. And before you know it, you get addicted and you start making stupid trades only because you want the excitement. They always work with risk capital, which is money they can afford to lose. They use stop and limit orders to reduce losses and they will never close. <coughs> and they, I'm sorry. And they always close out at the end of the day, regardless if you're down in a negative and you're losing your shirt. And you're so sure by morning it'll move back in the profit. Doesn't matter. Your rules of the trade are you close at the end of the day. Now, day trading functions through electronic communication networks, means you have to have fast computers, great computer skills, access to lots of information and data. You have to set up your computers correctly. You have to have, of course, today everybody has internet, but you have to have very high speed internet connection. You have to find a broker like CMS Trader that has very tight spreads and set up monitors and be ready to work at a drop a minute's notice. Many traders use analytic software to search for trades, receive information, execute trades, and manage accounts. And analytic software and scanners are very, very important because you can't be watching all the market continuously for little blips, you know, because you're, you're over here executing a trade. You need a scanner, you need an analytics that's analyzing and just, you know, saying, okay, this one's making a blip, this one's got momentum. So that you can pre-set up because you don't have the ability to watch the entire market or watch all those assets. Now, people who attempt to trade without these attributes and resources are likely to fail, and many do. Those that succeed encounter a severe learning curve, and that's one of the things about day trading, and this is it is the learning curve. I have a lot of friends who are day traders. I think they're nuts. At the end of the day, they usually need a tranquilizer, but they make a living. They make money at it. But then I know a lot of people that start out or want to be a day trader and they lose their shirts. And it's not that they lose their shirts because they're not smarter or safer. Is there is a learning curve. And it's getting all of your analytics in the right place, getting your attributes, getting everything set up right, getting it so you have a system that works, a strategies that work <coughs> in real life because you're making lots of trades very quickly. And it's a lot different to look up, you know, for me, I look at a trade and so what if I got to let it ride out tomorrow for three days, for five days, as long as it's not going against me and I'm not losing my shirt, I can let it ride. The day trader, you can't. So analyzing a trade that will move in a, you know, a short amount of time and move a size, you know, sizable amount is a whole different strategy than longer term position trading or swing trading or investing. So what happens is while you're making this learning curve, if you're starting out with a small portfolio, you can end up or small vent of capital, you can st end up losing your money and being and walking away, just saying, no, no, it's not for me. The fact is you just haven't gained enough experience at it yet. Either way, it's a full-time occupation.
Part-time day trading is possible, but difficult. Those who adopt a part-time approach still treat their trading as a business. They set a schedule and follow it religiously. They dis they dis discipline this discipline distinguishes them from hobbyists and those who experiment with day trading as a form of gambling. <clears throat> and this is one of the reasons that day trading gets a bad reputation because there's too many guys who come in there and think it's gambling. And they don't want to put the effort and time into understanding a strategy, understanding the asset, finding the right thing. They just want to make a whole bunch of trades and make little bits of profit. Well, the fact is, they need to go to Gamblers Anonymous and stay the hell out of trading. Now, day trading for beginners usually starts with research. They look out for different ways to improve their trading and dedicate a vast amount of time in the search of the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail is what traders call a perfect indicator or trading system that provides setups with a 100% success rate. You can search for that Holy Grail, but you'll never find it. Even some experienced traders do it from time to time. Unfortunately, perfect systems don't exist. The only holy grail is proper money management and risk management. Because when you learn that trading is about limiting your risk, reducing your odds, and managing your money right so that you stay in the market long enough to get those successful trades and the ones that run against you, which are more than the winning ones, don't hurt you too badly. <clears throat> They develop a strict trading plan and follow it strictly to manage their risk properly. As mentioned before, day trading for us is riskier than long-term trading, mostly because of the higher pace and frequency of trades. Day traders experience more pressure and have to be able to make decisions quickly and accept full responsibility. So you want to keep an eye out for averaging down. Simply put, averaging down is keeping a losing trade open too long. To avoid it, cut losing trades in accordance with pre-planned exit strategies. Remember, averaging down when day trading eats up not only your profits, but also your trading time. Now, also you have to understand all the different types of stop losses. And there are two major kinds that must be considered using them and never, ever make a trade without a stop loss because you never know when that market's gonna turn against you. <clears throat> a physical stop loss order placed at a price level in accordance with the risk tolerance, which should know from your training plan, approximately one to 2% is a good level. Basically, this is the most you can afford to lose in one trade. The other kind is a mental stop loss. And this is one is enforced by the trader when they get the feeling that something is going wrong. A mental stop loss is a crazy stop loss. No trader should ever not have a physical stop loss. You can always close your position and you can always move your stop loss okay, when you get the gut feeling. But that gut feeling is going to help you when you're too late to push the button or when you went in the kitchen to get that iced tea and before you came back, you didn't exercise that gut feeling and the market, you know, that asset fell against you to come back to your desk. Uh, two minutes later, and you've also out of your pocket $1,000. Now, have you ever entered a trade and watched the market make an unexpected turn and then suddenly realize that your trade is no good and it's time cash, to cash out? That's a mental stop. The trick is not confusing it just with panic. That's why both physical and mental stops need to be thought through before entering your trade, not after. Retail trade traders, specifically those who manage their own rather than somebody else's money, have another rule their stop losses must comply to. They set a maximum loss per day that they can withstand financially and mentally. If that point is ever reached, they remove themselves from the market. So as we're talking, this takes a lot of discipline. It takes a certain personality type. So you have to decide whether you're that kind of guy that can trade day trade exceptions these rules are possible but must be managed with specific care and the result must be accepted with full responsibility like i said i'm not a good day trader i can't do these things okay i just can't i've tried that's why i make the perfect 
swing trader and position trader. Okay. So you need to know exactly what you're doing. But the bottom line is even if you somehow manage to know what the news will be, there may be a, a there is no way to predict how the market is going to react in the first couple hours of a news event. Okay. Bullish news can cause a bearish market jerk and vice versa. Eventually the markets will return to a trend. But until it does, the environment isn't even safe enough to trade. Also, keep in mind that a trader might not be able to protect his account with stop orders around news. And that's another thing you have to realize. When there, even though you have a stop order, if the market gets extremely volatile, that means there's no liquidity. And sometimes the broker, because it's just a computer system, the broker's not sitting on the other side of your trade, it's going through a liquidity provider. <clears throat> may not be able to get you out of the market at your stop loss order. But then a lot of brokers like CMS Trader offer what they call a guaranteed stop loss, which costs you a few cents more, but it guarantees you you'll get out of whatever price you set because the broker will absorb the difference. So basically, you have to decide what strategy works for you, how much money you can risk, <clears throat> what your personality is, how you want to do this. But there is a possibility to be a successful day trader if you take the right steps, if you get the right information, if you're serious and positive about it. You know, for me is don't become a day trader. If you're a swing trader or a position trader, stay that way. Then start, you know, say, you know what, I'm going to look for one trade today and see how it works out. And eventually just make a trade here and there and see if you have a strategy that starts working. And slowly move yourself over to being a day trader. You decide, decide whether you want to be a day trader, swing trader, position trader, or whether you just want to be an investor, or maybe it's not for you at all, because it is work. It is a business, and you have to take it as work in a business. So on that note, I'll say good night to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. And if you go to www.cmstrader, like I said, you can open up a demo account. You can also set an appointment to talk with a financial expert who will give you more information and help you understand exactly what information you need to have to day trade. I'll set you up and show you how to use the economics, how, where to get the news and all the stuff you do need. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great trading week and thank you for supporting investing.com and CMS Trader. Have a good evening now. Bye now.